purposeful. Uh, digital sustainability. I mean, we're, we're delighted to have all of you here this morning. Good morning. A lot of titans of industry. I recognize many uh, friendly uh, faces. Um, all of you run uh, big industries uh, that have been interrupted, disrupted, uh, both by COVID and the supply chain issues that we have come upon us. I don't think I've read or opened the papers, you know, uh, and not seen anything on supply chain disruptions in the last two months. Um, and I think uh, with what we've gone through with COP26, with COP26, uh, with what we've gone through with COVID and now the, the Omnicom variant, this is front and center of every C-suite, uh, you know, business owner. And so we thought it would be timely to have uh, a kind of no-holds-barred, frank sharing, uh, put some business titans on the stage, get them to share their experiences of combining supply chains, digitalization, and sustainability in our workflow. So I often joke that DBS, uh, we were born over 50 years ago as the Development Bank of Singapore, ostensibly to develop what was then, you know, farmlands, uh, uh, wasteland in, in, in this small island of ours, and to provide financing to help us grow as a country. Uh, we've evolved. Uh, I like to joke that we became the Digital Bank of Singapore. And if Web 3.0 were to become a reality, if the blockchain and the DAO, the, the, the sort of um, you know, distributed autonomous organization could link buyers and sellers together directly, what is the implication for our business? What is the implication for us? Um, and so we thought it was timely to have this session. It's our second one. Our first one, we talked a lot about the blockchain. Um, today, I think we're going to be focusing on sustainability in, in, in great detail. I've, 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 I'm looking at at the, the speakers uh, on the front row, and I know that you know these are all titans of industry who are very, very uh, you know focused on sustainability, very, very focused on the digital agenda, um, and highly purpose driven. So at DBS, we are a purpose driven organization. Uh, we have three pillars around our, our purposeful agenda. The first is being a responsible bank. The second is having responsible business practices, um, and the, th the third is to create social impact. So being a responsible bank means we have to analyze you as our customers. We have to put credit, uh, you know, credit scorecard for your ESG parameters, your risk matrix in how we assess risk, how we take on more assets, how we lend to our customers, and we monitor your business practice. And what does that mean as a bank? It means that other than our scope one and scope two emissions, we also have to start measuring, tracking, and creating a glide path for our scope three emissions. Our scope three emissions are your emissions, you are customers' emissions. <laughs> That is not a trivial thing to do. But you know, it's all very well to say, I'll be net zero by 2050 or 2060. That's kicking the can down the line and sort of hoping somebody else will take over that job. Uh, here at DBS, we believe that if you're gonna walk the walk and talk the talk, you have to create that glide path. And that glide path starts now. That glide path to net zero starts now. By 2022, what are you going to achieve? By 2025, what are you going to achieve? By 2030, what are you going to achieve? What are the best practices for each industry? What are the things that we can do? There is a transition framework. There is a glide path. And actually, Yolanda sitting on the front row. She's our head of sustainability. And Yolanda and her team created the first uh, trans trans transition taxonomy and, and, and um, transition framework precisely to serve that purpose. We're in Asia. We recognize that being in Asia, you can't go from brown to green overnight. We've got emerging markets to, 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 to deal with. We have emerging markets with population who don't even have access to, to, to cheap electricity, right? daily necessities. So we need to have that transition path. And so as an Asian bank with a purpose, we recognize that we need to hold our customers' hands, use whatever digital tools we have in place, and help them through this guide, glide path. So thank God, as a digital bank, there are a lot of, there are a plethora of, of, of digital tools out there from open APIs um, to the blockchain. And so for the APIs, we've been able to plug and play our APIs into our customer systems. So for example, in China, during the height of COVID, we were able to help hire, hire as a white goods uh, manufacturer in China. They sell washing machines, um, or fridges, et cetera. We were able to plug our APIs into this and seamlessly offer same day, real time financing to that plethora of distributors all over China. Uh, we've been doing that for a lot of our supply chain uh, customers offering you know, real-time financing, just plugging our APIs through. Um, you know, I like to joke that the trade 
trade systems in the world have not changed in 50 years. Um, trade, documentary trade is still a very paper-based business. Right? We're still using paper to, to send LCs uh, to, to validate that the bill of lading has gone to certain, certain ports, etc. Um, and when we had the Hinleong debacles, Happen, Hinleong debacle happened in Singapore two years ago. We decided that as a country, we're small enough to experiment with digitizing the trade process, but hopefully big enough to have an impact and a purpose. So we started SG TradeX together with uh, uh, various banks and, and the government um, and, and a common data repository precisely to help create these smart contracts. In fact, with Trafigura, we, we did a lot of work on the SG TradeX with different banks. Um, and, and it was precisely to be able to help our customers in their supply chain create the tracking and tracing, the smart contracts. So I'm only lending to people who have a bona fide bill of lading. There's no double or triple lending against their, their trade contracts. Um, so I do believe that with the, uh, you know, the, with the advent of digital tools and the added sort of impetus of sustainability, governments, corporates, banks can work together to fulfill this agenda of ESG, this agenda of, of, of digitalization of trade, and this agenda of, of being a better, you know, better organization for a better world. I'll just talk briefly about the blockchain. I talked about APIs. At DBS, we believe that the blockchain has four use cases. The first use case is the proof of value, right? Uh, what, what is the value of your, your contract? The second use case is the proof of identity. Are you who you are? UVF Corp, you know, it's your, it's, 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 it's your carbon credits really yours. And then a proof of transaction or a proof of obligation. The latter two, I think, are very useful in the use cases for trade. And I think, Sriram, you're going to be talking a lot. We've worked with various uh, uh, um, uh, digital platforms from Contour to JD.com to Trustful, which is started by Ant. Um, and all these blockchain-based uh, digital solutions have enabled us to be able to create that immutable, traceable, systemic tracking of trade. And that helps us to A, make sure you're sustainable, and B, make sure that the goods are getting into the ports on time. With a lot of what we heard about the, the log jam at the ports, actually some of it was due to just paperwork, you know, not arriving on time. Right? And if we can really digitize this end-to-end -end and governments and, and, and can, can finally work together, I think this wake-up call in the last few months should have created an impetus for governments to move quicker. And I hope that will be the case. So all that's left for me to say is thank you for spending this morning with us. We'll keep it snappy. We'll keep it relevant. Um, and thank you for joining us on this purposeful digital and sustainable journey. There's a lot to, there's a lot to do. So much excitement. Uh, I was just in Olam's office. Uh, actually, a few days ago, to learn about the green pass, um, and it, you know, this is a kind of this is a time where previously competitors uh, are now working together. You know, I, I I'm now working with other banks to to, to help to create these use cases. Uh, you know, food and agri companies are working with each other. Textile companies are working with each other. I think we all have the same agenda, and we all want to go the we all want to do the right thing. So that's, that's my welcome for you. Thank you very much for spending this morning with us.